Holy smokes. Oh. I was not planning on making a video today. In fact, you can hear my raspy voice because I was at Halloween Horror Nights yesterday. Here's a picture to prove it. Screaming my behind off, thinking I wasn't gonna be posting a video today, but we have to respond to the commentary, the critical commentary that came out of the video that I posted yesterday. And hence, we are starting what I am calling the Meet Kevin Show. The Meet Kevin Show is where I will respond to critical commentary so that you can learn three things. One, how to make more money. Two, how to debate like Kevin does and debate in a rational format. And three, show off some humility because folks, I am sorry. I clearly screwed up my video yesterday. I clearly did not clarify the intentions and as a result led some people sadly, and this really hurt me, to lose respect for the videos that I make. When I mentally zoomed out a little bit and sort of self-analyzed, I realized, oh my gosh, here's Kevin thinking everybody watches every single video that I put out and everybody is caught up to speed with what I'm thinking, so when I'm reacting in a raw format, I fail to clarify more, and that has to stop. But that's why today we are doing the Meet Kevin Show, and we're gonna go ahead and start with the critical commentary, and we're going to analyze these one by one in a Noob vs. Pro fashion as I go ahead and rate the commentary. Here's the first one. Graham would agree with their video. This guy eats nothing but hard-boiled eggs. This is obviously hyperbole. Obviously, Graham doesn't eat just hard-boiled eggs, but let me make something very clear about Graham. Quick reminder, 22% off on the courses and in-person crash course events are linked below. Next event is Miami. Does expire on September 30th, so make sure you jump in before those are gone. Graham, I will say, is very frugal, but keep in mind what Graham did differently. Graham made his wealth by building his income, then investing his wealth to become a self-made millionaire by investing in real estate, then took advantage of building virality on YouTube, which pays significantly more than selling real estate, by talking about his investments and his money choices. So I actually think this comment, while it's funny, is out of place. It implies that you could get rich by eating hard-boiled eggs, but misses the point that the person that you're referring to didn't get rich eating hard-boiled eggs. Now, Laura's comment is probably one of the best and most well-constructed arguments here. She states that she thinks I missed the bigger picture about how people should save money. And hey, I realize that, but I'm just gonna interject here and say, it's not a matter of saving money. It's what you do with your money when you save it. But let's continue on because there are some good points in this comment. I personally found Two Cents video extremely real. I used to have a full-time job and about four to five times a week would order Uber Eats for breakfast, lunch, and sometimes dinner when I worked a night shift. The amount of money I spent on outside food without realizing it was astronomical. But I always thought, oh, whatever, I'll make it back. And that was a slippery slope where you were spending 200 $50 a month on outside food and in this cycle of needless spending. It's been a year since I last had a reliable paying job and now I only eat out two to three times per month because I resulted to just cooking at home and meal prepping. I spend maybe $70 to $80 per month and I contribute to my Roth ETFs, Wealthfront savings, and investing in my future business. So I'm going to pause right here and just say, hold on a second. There's a really big problem with your comment, Laura. You said it's been a year since you've had a reliable paying job. That's bad. With this comment that you've structured, you're a very smart person. You should not be in a position where you haven't had a reliable job for a year and that you're working towards investing in your future business. So what you're telling me is you're in purgatory. You're telling me you're saving money on food because you're not making any money. Your problem isn't a question of eating out. Your problem is you don't have a job. You're in purgatory. Here was your reliable job a year ago, and here in the future is your business. What's stopping you from starting your business today? What's stopping you from getting a reliable paying job now? And then focus on building your wealth. Look, it's easy and inspiring for me to make a YouTube video and say, hey guys, invest in ETFs, invest in your Roth, invest in Wealthfront, great. 
But if you don't have a job and you're not bringing in money, it doesn't matter because what you're investing is actually small. And so ironically, your scenario serves my point. Eating out wasn't your problem. Maybe you had a job that you didn't like and that's why you've transitioned away from that job, which is fine, but it's time to transition into a job. Notice here, eating out has nothing to do with your financial well-being. The fact that you're spending 70 to $80 a month on groceries and you're saving money by spending less and, and cooking at home, that's wonderful, but you should be focused right now on the top line, not the bottom line. I will go as far as saying I would rather see you at a reliable paying job or creating your business and spending money on Uber Eats because guess what? When you're in a business or you're in a reliable job, you have the ability to increase your income. When you're not in a reliable paying job or you're in purgatory, your income isn't going to go anywhere. You'll always be in this trap. That is, cooking at home will always keep you poor. Moving on, Lucifer says, mad disrespectful with the title. This is actually a pro comment. Even though it is a comment that is offensive, it's very good because it's succinct, it's to the point, and he's right. The title, the way it was read by others and not the way it was intended, which is my fault. I'm not trying to say other people didn't read it correctly. The way it was worded is bad, but he is absolutely correct. Mad disrespectful with the title. Thank you for that comment. Yeah. Now this comment chain is particularly interesting. The advice from the original video is sound. Kevin is trying too hard to spin a topic not so relevant into fitting his channel content. First of all, that Daniel, not the best kind of comment. It doesn't have any argumentation. There are no facts. There's nothing I can really debate in this. So instead I'm gonna scroll down to this. Somebody called debate me. I make 700 to $1,000 more a month than my coworkers because I bring my lunch and buy my groceries. First of all, very, very dangerous mindset said to be relative to what other people are doing. Anytime you're relative to what other people are doing, you're usually not focused on building your own wealth. And that is evidenced by the rest of this comment. It's actually not so great. Because of this and many other things like this, I own an Italian exotic car and am about to potentially buy a five unit rental. My costs are so low, I could save up a ton of money really fast and have multiple vehicles. If I ate out and did this, I'd be broke and could not buy the house I want. Oh my gosh. So basically what you're saying is you don't own any real estate yet. You don't own any real estate but you're here giving people financial advice because you own multiple vehicles. Debate me. Wow. Your comment buries you. I appreciate you saying, hey, look, I save 700 to $1,000 a month because I don't eat out. But this right here is exactly, exactly the problem. People think I'm going to save money on not eating out. And then instead of investing, which is what I recommend, they spend money on crap. Your comment says, you own an Italian exotic car. Waste the money, bro. Waste of money. That All you're trying to do is show off to your friends, which is really evidenced by you being relative to your friends and coworkers by comparing your finances to theirs. Then you say you're about to potentially buy a five unit apartment building, bro. About to potentially means you're probably not even pre-approved yet. Now, I know I'm coming across as harsh here, but this is, this is the problem. This is the perfect definition of why I say no. The concept that eating out keeps you poor is stupid because when people save money on not eating out, they leave money in a savings account. They don't automatically invest. They don't invest in real estate. They end up buying stupid things like butter items, fancy cars, the Beats headphones they don't need, and they don't end up building wealth. Based on your comment, your words, you don't even own the house that you live in and you don't own rental property. Look, debate me, I appreciate you being here and responding to the comments, but you gave me enough content in your comment alone for me to turn that comment around on yourself. So unfortunately, this is a very poorly structured comment. I look forward to more insight from you and any kind of evidence you can give me to show that I'm wrong because this doesn't look good from my perspective. Kevin, we know you want to make a video every day, but come on, man, dot, dot, dot. You're trying way too hard making this video 
video. You and Two Cents have very valid points. I think Two Cents is mostly aimed at college students who are broke. Your audience is different. Now the comment's actually a pretty decent quality comment. The opener is a little bit of an attack and doesn't provide a lot of value to the context of the comment. So this comment could have really gone without the opener, which is really just a slam sort of implying, oh, Kevin's just trying to slap together videos, just sort of talks down the effort that I put into my videos. But hey, that aside, let's actually argue the quality part of the comment, which is that Two Cents targets their videos at broke college students. Well, personally, I could not disagree more with that statement for the following three reasons. Uh, number one, I believe Two Cents uh, targets a lot of their content, whether they mean to or not, actually at high school students, because it's at a level that is relatively basic. And I'm not using that as a slam, I'm actually using that as a contrast. I like to target my videos at college students and beyond, because my videos are a little bit more advanced. They do require a bit more thinking. However, the quality you get out of them can tend to be a lot more significant in terms of practical advice that you can really use. In fact, the reason I say that is I was that broke college student. I was that broke student learning to become a real estate agent while going to college a full time who didn't see their income really grow until they left that anchor that is school. However, that leads me to my second point. College students are the best people to absorb a path and an example. And what I provide on this channel is a path towards financial freedom. I don't give you simple advice like, hey, you know what? Eating out is expensive and it can be unhealthy. Duh. That's duh level thinking in my opinion. Yes, obviously eating out is cumulatively costly and it's expensive. In fact, in the video that I reacted to, I made it very clear that when Two Cents made an example of this character, Jake, and said he spends $9,100 or 12% of his income, they actually missed the real point, which is Jake isn't spending 12% of his income. He's actually spending over 17% of his income because he has to pay taxes and then he can buy food. And I actually amplified their argument that eating out is bad. Now the argument I poorly constructed was the evolution of that. Yes, eating out is expensive. Yes, don't eat out often. Even myself, I don't eat out often. I eat at home most of the time. I eat the same freaking bowl of cereal, the same toast and cheese and turkey and avocado sandwich, the same thing every single day because yes, it saves money and it's a good habit. But to me, it doesn't provide a real path to college students. In my opinion, college students should first be thinking about what can I do next to to maximize my income, while at the same time, yes, having frugal habits, to then build wealth and invest. That was the point that I was making in my video. Juka says, if your wife is an excellent cook, eating at home is much less expensive than eating out. Second, Kevin, you are a credit advocate, but I made my money by eating rice and beans, paying off my student loans and building passive income. I didn't inherit my money like 85% of millionaires. Unfortunately, Juka here, this is not the best comment. I cannot rate this comment highly. Here's why. The first statement you make is not one that I disagree with. I don't disagree that eating at home is cheaper. I think that's wonderful. But the second part of your comment creates some problems. First of all, Juka, your facts are a little bit off. Less than 21% of millionaires inherit any money and less than 3% of millionaires inherited a million dollars or more. That means over 79% of millionaires become millionaires with zero inheritance. Also, the comment could have been a little bit better built by giving us some examples of things that you're investing in with your cash to build these additional passive income sources. See, when we look at the channel Two Cents, the most popular comment on their How Eating Out Keeps You Poor video is, how do I make 7% on my money? And that is what my channel is built around, showing you the various different strategies, whether it's picking stocks, whether it's investing in index funds, Funds, whether it's timing the market, whether it's averaging the market out, whether it's investing in real estate or buying below market real estate, I easily show you how to make more than 7% on your money. And that is what my channel is dedicated to, giving different perspectives to helping you make money. 
Becky says, this feels like he just wants to argue for argue's sake. Now, this is actually a pretty a decent a comment because it brings up the idea of, wait a minute, why is Kevin making this video? And I think that is where clarity can always be added. Kevin makes these videos to add perspective to people's lives. And when I see videos that I think are driving one message, but they're not bringing the point home completely, I try to add perspective anytime I can. This last time, obviously, I didn't do that as clearly as I should have. DSNC says, eating out sure keeps you fat and it's cheaper to cook your own food and it's healthier. Now, this comment I have to put as not the best. It's definitely not a pro comment, mostly because it misses the point of the video that I made. This wasn't a debate about whether or not eating out is healthy or unhealthy, and it wasn't a matter of what is cheaper. To me, this is a good depiction of, again, somebody who read the title but didn't watch the entire video. So someone not managing to save any money should buy a house instead of not eating out. Your perspective is so skewed. Short-term and long-term goals should not be the same. You seem to only have one tool in your toolbox. Well, the last part of that comment is really just a slam. Again, doesn't belong in commentary, just a slam. The first part of your comment is actually a very reasonable question. So let's clarify that. No, Obviously, if you're not managing to save, just buying a house isn't going to magically solve all of your problems. I think that's a little bit of a condescending statement, but it's one that's worth responding to. Because no, a house isn't going to solve all of your problems. You need to have a balance of proper finances in order to buy a property. But what does buying a property accomplish? It forces you to save every single month. And if you're not saving, yes, buying a house now means you are saving money every single month. Now, the second part of your comment is very true though. Yes, that's a long-term mindset. It saves you money over the long run. However, the nice thing about this is it also can get you into the mindset of, oh wow, owning real estate isn't scary. Now I wanna get into rental property or I wanna move and I wanna convert my first house into a rental property. Now what are you doing? You created a long-term forced savings account, but now you've turned that into other investments. And that motivation by buying your first property actually motivated you to hopefully clean up your act a little bit better and save a little bit more money for that rainy day fund and your investment properties. Surprisingly, home ownership can oftentimes force you to clean up your finances, and now you are forced not to eat out as much. So it could almost be a tool for you. Now, this is a very interesting perspective. Doug says, I find that eating out costs just as much as eating healthy at home, at least for me. I'm on the go too much to cook between lunch and dinner. I average 15 to $18 per day. Grass-fed beef, cage-free chicken, wild-caught salmon isn't cheap. And Doug, this is totally accurate. It's something that I alluded to as well. If you want quality home-cooked food, you're probably not cooking for $4 per meal. So Doug actually brings up a very interesting further argument that if you wanted to eat the highest quality, healthiest food at home, you might actually spend more money than eating out. So there are a lot of variables here. Now, obviously eating out isn't going to be as healthy as eating at home, especially if you're choosing your own ingredients. And trust me, I used to work in a restaurant. I saw what was in these ingredient labels and I used to study what was in the ingredient labels because I'm fanatical like that. I look at the ingredients and I study what all the chemicals are and it's shocking what could be found inside a child's burger bun. But we won't get into that because this is about making money and not only about health here. Now, Joseph's comment was repeated many, many times, and we're going to use his here as an example where he says, if you make minimum wage, spending $6,000 on food will kill your budget. If you make $150,000 a year, it won't hurt your budget. But this really, really misses the point. First of all, if you're working minimum wage, you might only be making ten dollars to $20,000. Obviously, spending $500 per month on food is way excessive. I wasn't able to do that on minimum wage as well. And yes, if you make $150,000, $6,000 won't make that big of a difference. But that misses the point. The point is there's a correct ratio or correct proportion of balance that everybody should be spending on food no matter what your income is. However, 
at every different bracket of income. There are investing principles and principles that help you build wealth and increase your income that are more important than solely saying your magic bullet is eating out less. When I worked on minimum wage, I went out with my wife now, Lauren, once to twice per month. And we went out because it gave us that excitement to go out on a date and spend money and live life a little bit. That doesn't mean we went out every single night. We went out proportionately for how much our income was, once to twice per month on minimum wage with both of us sharing the bill and oftentimes splitting a meal. But whether or not we went out twice a month or 10 times a month wouldn't have made a difference in how I built my wealth today because I didn't build my wealth on eating out less and then trying to save that money. I build my wealth by increasing my income, trying to find out how can I get out of working for minimum wage. And then I focused on how do I apply that income to investing. Now we're gonna look at Shane Hummus's comment who has a YouTube channel, you should check it out. Kevin, I really like your content usually, but you missed the mark on this video. Obviously when you're rich, you don't really have to worry much about the cost of eating out. And of course that's the way rich people think because they're more concerned with time than money. This is why people fly on private jets. Well, I'm just gonna pause right here and say, Shane, what is your advice to the last comment where Laura is in purgatory with her job? I don't think I missed the mark. I think I hit the nail on the head and I'm actually amplifying the dialogue we should be having. People need to be focused on amplifying their income, not solely on eating out. And instead, when we see people that are championing, oh, eating out is terrible, they're spending money on luxury Italian cars. So no, I don't think I missed the point of the video at all. Justin Kenward says, wow, way too utterly and completely miss the mark. Yeah, you totally lost my respect with this video. You've taken things out of context, edited out whole points and examples in their video, and it's not even that I'm supporting two cents, but you butchered and misrepresented their video to the point that it's borderline libel. Well, that's obviously a very aggressive aggressive comment. Now, it's very difficult to respond to this because this is a very poorly constructed argument. Again, I'm not saying that because it's a mean comment, Fine, you know, they're welcome to their opinion, but this argument could have had a lot more power by giving examples of what did I edit out? Because I personally don't feel that I edited out anything of meat or matter that would have changed the argument that I was making there or the argument that I am clarifying here. Most people feel I missed the mark because they think that I missed the point Two Cents was making, that people should save money instead of spending money out, and that eating out is much more expensive. But the problem is, I agreed with that later in my reaction and agree with that now. I didn't make it clear, so I admit I made a mistake. But this, Justin, is a pretty mean argument, and because there's no content here for me to respond to, it's very difficult for me to actually have a counter to this argument. That's the problem with poor commentary on YouTube. But to say something like this, where you're basically accusing me of breaking civil code and committing a libelous offense without giving examples is kind of messed up. So Justin, I hate to say it, but I dislike your comment. Kevin eats out a lot and this struck a nerve. Well, this is actually incorrect. I do not eat out a lot. Lauren and I go to dinner maybe once a per week and 99% of the food I eat is at home. I'm actually a huge health nut. I eat almost nothing but watermelon, fruits, grapes. I will eat two boxes of grapes in one night. I eat whole wheat cereal and my whole wheat bread. That is my life right there. I just described most of the food that I eat. But I will say I have eaten out a lot and because I've eaten out a lot, I can tell you, I agree, eating out is usually overpriced and expensive, though there are some nice things about eating out. So Dragon Hero 14 has a very well-constructed argument. He says, I watched both videos and still agree with the message of two cents. And that's okay. I'm not trying to convince everybody. They weren't saying that eating out was bad or that it would make you poor directly. They're saying that eating out more than you should can spend money that you should have invested in things like retirement or real estate, thus making you poor in the long run. And this is very valid. 
said, yes, if you could cut your spending down a little bit, you'll be able to save more for a down payment to go buy that house and stop renting. Absolutely. These are really good points. And hey, you know what? People are bad at budgeting. It's not taught in school. Dragon, you're 100% right. Two Cents did a great job of exemplifying how much damage not saving money could have. And by constantly spending money out, you might not be able to invest or ever buy that house. So Dragon, I think that's actually a very good clarification. And it's one that I should have included with much more clarity in my reaction video. Let's be honest, Kevin, I can't find no house in a Southern California for $250,000. Well, because of your double negative, I actually agree with you. You can find a place for $250,000 in Southern California. Now, when I use $250,000, I actually referred to the national average of a home price, which is $250,000. But if you want to take it to the extreme and say, where can you spend $250,000? Let's just go ahead and go to my zip code directly. We'll go ahead and jump on over to the 93003 zip code. And what we're going to do is we're going to look specifically at one neighborhood where you can buy a townhouse for around $250,000 to $280,000. Now I realize this isn't a stick build, your own four walls sort of setup, but here's a property listed for $268,000 that I can find literally within 10 seconds of me searching. You could probably negotiate this down to $250,000 and there you go, a Southern California start for $250,000. But again, the statistic I used was to reference the national average of a house, which is $250,000. Kyle A here says, so I watched this video to the end. I watched the PBS video before you made this one. And honestly, dude, you missed the mark on this one. Not only did you miss the point of the video, which was to put eating out into perspective, but you blatantly skewed the video by not including a bit at the end where PBS said, now we're not saying you should never eat out. Really misleading. Two cents is a great channel to watch. Let me pause right there and just say that, Kyle, if you really watched my video all the way to the end, you would have realized that I agreed that eating out is bad. In fact, if you go to that video and you go to the eight minute, 45 second mark, you hear me say, I agree, eating out in excess is bad. And I actually inflate two cents argument by including the tax factor. So no, I don't think me not including every little bit of a video, which would have doubled the length of my video was done intentionally to mislead because I thought I made their point very clear and I actually made their point more impactful. So Kyle, this is actually a very decently structured argument that you're making. And that's why I'm breaking this apart into two here. We're going to read the rest of your comment here. This is a very decently structured argument. So great comment. Obviously it's very negative and I am disputing the statements you're making, but pretty well structured argument. But don't try to discredit a channel by not including bits that don't fit your narrative. Try watching the entire video next time before giving commentary. This is a little bit rough. Obviously, when you do a reaction video, you don't watch the entire video first. Now, I could have added more clarity at the end, but I don't believe I purposely cut anything out maliciously. If anything, I cut the video and left very important pieces where not only did I amplify their message to say, yes, eating out can be very expensive, but I also made sure to leave very important balancing arguments where I say, hey, you know what? Maybe instead of only being focused on saving up 20% for a house, maybe people should consider trying to get into below market value real estate with 3% down, 5% down, 10% down. This is actually an argument that nobody made comments on because I think most people unfortunately just read the title. And so there you have the very first Meet Kevin show where I respond to negative and critical commentary and hopefully you were able to take away some advice on how to debate, a little bit of humility from Kevin on, yes, I screwed up clarifying in the first video and I'm very sorry for that. I promise not to do that again. I am very sorry. And hopefully you learned a little bit of money advice as well. Don't be in purgatory. Don't waste your money. Go invest, get it out of sight, get it out of mind, get it invested. Join me in the real estate investing course, the real estate aging course, or the crash courses. And folks, until next time.